Hey you heroes! Welcome to Marvel Champions Monthly, a fan cast about the card game Marvel Champions by Fantasy Flight Games. Thanks for joining us as we complete heroic deeds and thaw the villain's evil schemes. Hey everybody, welcome to Marvel Champions Monthly. We are a fan podcast about the card game Marvel Champions. I'm one of your hosts, Kennedy Hawk, and we have a special Con of Heroes episode here today. So we've got Americano. How's it going, Americano? It's going great. And we've got Hone, a.k.a. Terrence. What's your real name and what's your screen name? I can never remember. Terrence is my real name, but Hone is my, my handle, I guess, on the interwebs. Yes, who is a frequent, basically permanent special guest on the One Stop Co-op Shop Friday Night Streams. And one of the um, event coordinators for Con of Heroes. That's what I was going to say next. And we're three of the event coordinators <laughs> for Con of Heroes, which is everything we're talking about today. So there's a couple deadlines coming up for Con of Heroes. So we wanted to talk about the Con of Heroes to everybody that's on the podcast feed. So that if you want to go, you can make sure that you make it, book your tickets, flights, and hotels now. So, Con of Heroes is a Marvel Champions fan convention that happens in Roseville, Minnesota, right across from the FFG North America headquarters. Um, it runs from May 5th to May 7th of 2023 this year, this year, so it is coming up. And there's a couple deadlines. Um, there's no hard deadline for registration yet. Tickets will be available almost right up until the moment of arrival. But for playmats and swag, um, we have to send our order in for playmats that you can use as an add-on to your ticket. And that ends on February 28th, so 20-ish days away. And for swag, all the all the the free stuff you get when you show up, we'll make it so everybody can get swag even if they sign up after this deadline. But our bulk printing deadline is March 15th. So on March 15th, we have to estimate how many more tickets we think we're going to sell, get enough extras that we're sure we can account for everybody that's signing up after that. So Please sign up by March 15th to guarantee you get your swag at the door. Otherwise, it might be something that comes to you later after the con. Um, and with the deadlines and boring news and announcements out of the way, let's get to talking about Con of Heroes. That sound good? Let's do it. All right. Okay. So I thought first we could talk about Con of Heroes from last year. So I'll let Americano give us his opinions and thoughts on last year's con and how it all went down and what it was all about. Okay, so yeah, Con of Heroes last year was our first year. Um, we didn't, so we we kept it light on events, that type of thing. It was it was a lot of playing Marvel Champions over the weekend with a lot of community members. It was a really good time. There were, I don't know that there were any solo games being played. Uh, there may have been, um, but it was mostly multiplayer games. Um, a lot of four player games actually, but you can play any player count. Um, basically we brought anything we wanted to play heroes, villains, anything. And one of the things that we did, um, as a convention is we had, um, a shield headquarters where we had a whole bunch of cards, um, extra core sets and all that extra hero packs so that people can, you know, like those book libraries where are the take a book, leave a book, that type of thing. Most people didn't leave it, uh, which is fine. Just take what you needed um, to round out your decks, those types of things. And uh, it was a good time. I mean, we got to, I got to play with a lot of different people, got to play a lot of different, a lot of the scenarios that I was hot on um, and talk to people about, um, just see the, see the, the different, um, different scenarios and heroes that people liked that maybe I didn't. And so it opened up more um, opportunities for me to see those heroes and villains in action that normally don't happen because I choose not to. But but it's all right because everyone... I mean, it was a good time all around. And the Shield HQ is pretty helpful, right? I know I packed what I thought was everything I needed, and then I realized I was missing a couple cards I wanted to swap out so I could go grab them from Shield HQ. We carry that over from year to year. So if you see a pack that's on sale, I know I had a store recently go out of business, which is sad, but they sold a bunch of Marvel Champions hero packs for like $2. So I hope people like playing Drax and Venom because I have like 10 copies of them now. 
Um, but yeah, feel free to take things from it or leave things. It'll grow as the convention grows over the years. And don't forget, if you're going to play Drax Protection, don't forget to bring the Night Nurse. That's really important. If you don't, you'll get made fun of. Not really. We're friendly. Yeah. What did you think, Terrence? How, how did the con go for you? Uh, it went well. Uh, I learned that Americano doesn't pack Night Nurse in his Drax Protection deck, which costed a game I was playing with uh, Sko uh, during the con, um, because I think we both of us got like status, uh, and that would have allowed us to eke out that like final point of damage, whatever we need to get that win. Um, You're welcome. But you know, overall, Drax Protection is still really fun and good time. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was just really cool to put, I think, faces to names that you see on Discord all the time and that you're interacting with, um, and even people that maybe aren't even part of the Discord at all, right? Uh, and just get together and talk about something that I think everyone has in common, which is this game, uh, and got to try stuff all the way up to like Heroic One Rhino, um, and also a bunch of Expert and Standard games, too. Uh, yeah, just a good time if what you want to do is spend a week and just both playing and just talking shop for an entire weekend of, of Marvel Champions. Yeah, totally. And I think last year we had about 100 people between volunteers and attendees. So we're looking to be at the same number or higher this year so far. So there should be plenty of games to go around, which will be awesome. Yeah. Uh, yep. Plenty of games. We also had some non-Marvel Champions stuff on Sunday uh, last year, which was cool to see people kind of bring out different things they're interested in. And then also just the variety of people, I think, was really neat to see. Like, saw some families with uh, bringing their children to come play, so that was really cool. Um, we had, we oh, of course, we had lots of swag to give out. That okay. was fun. Um, and yeah, everyone so last got, year... got stuff. Everybody got stuff. There was a uh, first player poker, poker chip, right? First player token with the con logo on it. Um, there were a couple custom mod sets that went along with the campaign. I think there was like a participation prize for one of the events. Um, and more of that to come this year. More, more things like that, I think. So yeah. here's a you question also- for people. Oh, go for it. Oh, we also just raffled off a ton of stuff, I felt like. Uh, oh, yeah. There was a huge raffle with a bunch of different Marvel games, but also, like, a local comic shop donated a bunch of comics that had characters from Marvel Champions on the cover, so you could get, like, a comic with your favorite character. Um, some custom token vendors donated tokens and things like that off Etsy, so if you're listening to this and you are one of those custom token vendors and wants to donate things, please reach out on Discord with Kennedy Hawk or... You can email us at marvelchampionsmonthly at gmail.com, or I think con of heroes at gmail.com is the con, the actual con email. So that would be good too. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I guess I should point out all this stuff that we are talking about is on the con of heroes website, conofheroes.com. And if you're listening to this in, in the car or whatever and you're like, oh, I missed that, you can go to conofheroes.com and look at the, we're going to talk about like the schedule and events and things like that. but you can find it all on the website too. Um, maybe not as in depth as we talk about it here, but the the, bo- the bare bones of it is on there, so you can kind of get an idea an idea of what to expect, what we what we experienced last year, and what to expect this year. Did you know we made it big? It used to be if you Googled Con of Heroes, some like comic convention in Iowa would like come up first, but now Con of Heroes, the fan Marvel Champions Con, comes up as the first result. So nice. Good job, team. Yeah, I wonder how they feel about that. Well, hopefully they're listening and decide to come. <laughs> Scope out the competition, right? <laughs> um, so what's for people that haven't been to like a card game convention that's designated to one convention, what are y'all going to pack? How, did you pack too much last year? Did you pack too little? What are you going to bring? I felt like I did not pack as much as I would like. Um... I mean, pro tip, make sure to bring your cards each day. I forgot on Saturday, which I think is like the biggest day. So I'd actually, it was it was both great because it was like a forcing function. So I just bummed decks off of people the entire day, which was actually really fun. Um, but yeah, I was actually traveling from Europe uh, on a work trip. So I actually just slimmed down exactly what I needed. Um, so 
I think last year we told people to pack Sinister Motives. Is that correct? Like for encounters? Yeah, so we, in mid-March, we'll provide a packing list that says if you want to be the person that runs games at your table, right? Because there's going to be a bunch of players. Not everybody has to bring all the scenarios. Here are all like the event scenarios. Like we're going to run an event with last time there was one with uh, Ultron. So we told everybody bring Ultron with this mod because it's one of the events. So we'll have that packing list of what like villain cards to bring if you want to participate in all the events. But typically people brought like their favorite couple villains as well so that they could play them with people. Yep. Yeah, I fit everything in a quiver, essentially, because I felt like that was what I could comfortably bring across and carry through an airport without hating myself. Um, but I managed to fit, uh, I think, the recommended packing list of villains plus some modulars and then basic four decks. Um, and one yeah. in each aspect, essentially. That's That's pretty much what I brought. I think this year, one of the days I might choose to just um bum decks out people so that i I can just choose random or have them choose what i play um on one of the days just because that might make force me to try different heroes that i don't typically play and that sounds like that was a good experience for you terrence so maybe i'll force myself into doing that maybe i'll do the whole weekend maybe i just won't bring any heroes yeah, I had a, a there, lot of spider ham. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> oh no, maybe I won't. Maybe I will actually bring some heroes. <laughs> the only people who offer you decks are people who have spider ham decks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll give them to everybody. Here, give them this. Oh, I, I at a at one of our are they a sister con? But like the kind of the rings, kind of the Lord of the Rings equivalent that kind of kickstarted all these like LCG cons. Um, one of the podcast hosts uh, that was part of Great Company podcast, he actually brought no decks with him and just bum decks off the entire weekend. So uh, it is a thing I think you can do and get away with and have a good time. Yeah, that actually sounds pretty fun. I packed way too many decks last time. I think I brought two decks per aspect and I had them like all prepared, which is good to have your decks prepared so you can play really frequently. Um, but I only ended up playing three of them. I think the first day like I chose what decks I played and the second day I was just trying to play with as many different people as possible. And I would always ask them, I'd be like, what do you want me to play? And every single person placated me and told me to play Hawkeye. So I played Hawkeye like 12 times. So this year, I might just bring the 15 Hawkeye cards and then four different 25 card decks so I can just play Hawkeye in whatever aspect. And if someone else wants to play Hawkeye, I'll just watch. Do you, do you not just have like enough copies of Hawkeye where you can bring I actually decks? do, but one of them's in German and one of them's in Spanish, and I don't speak either of those languages. But you can, you can tell by But I have it art, memorized, right? so it's yeah. like, okay, right? Yeah, you can do it by art, right? Um, I think I could, but I'd mess something up. But um, but yeah, that was one suggestion I saw someone put online, is they're going to make four modular decks. They're going to bring like six heroes, and then a 25-card justice, leadership, aggression, and protection deck, and they could just swap it into whatever hero they want to play as. Um, and then I saw someone that said they bring, you know, like a bunch of different variants of decks, but then they take pictures of all of them on their phone. So when they're ready to be like, oh, I want to run that Thor, this deck, I know which cards to grab really quick, and I don't have to, like, fumble with it. That's but a good I think idea. having them, like, pre-prepared is pretty good. Yeah I, yeah, I will say, I'm not going... I don't recommend people don't bring decks, because if nobody brings decks, then they're... <laughs> We're all going to be playing pre-cons from the store. <laughs> so, uh, I will still bring decks. I'll just... Uh, I think I'm going to open it up to to just bumming decks possibly and there um, is food available at the con um there's no outside food in the store but there'll be water and things like that available but there's also like a restaurant in the front you can go get a buzzer get your food and bring it back into the game hall um there's also a couple restaurants locally that you can drive to pretty quickly if you want to get out for lunch or dinner and come back yeah get, so get green things get hmm? green things yeah eat your Gross. veggies um so just to make it a point so the the doors will open at ten for the convention, but the kitchen doesn't open till noon. Um, so don't expect to have anything available for a couple hours if that's what you're anticipating. I'm glad you knew that, because I did not. Yep. Yeah, I th- this I is why you're here. They they have pastries and coffee and stuff though, right? But just not hot food, if I recall. Um, I believe that's what it that's, is. Yep, I think so. The kitchen won't be available until ten or till twelve. All right. Well, we should get to like the actual stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Talk about stuff. talk about the different events each day. 
Yeah, is that the first thing on our list? We had an agenda. We were almost organized. Well, you know, we that's... so we will talk about events, but there is something that's kind of overarching throughout the entire convention that Terrence is going to talk about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so um, one of the things that um, we're hoping to do this year uh, that we have have planned is uh, achievements. So uh, when we announce kind of the stuff that you're going to bring, we're going to have a theme of kind of the set scenarios. And then... Um, as part of that, uh, we're gonna we are working on some challenges uh, to kind of change up or make it fun for people who have kind of played those scenarios a bunch of times, and uh, we'll just have different kind of achievements uh, for people to kind of do that might uh, you know make a scenario a little more interesting um, if you've played it a hundred times already. Uh, so, for example, so- like like starting with a specific card in in front of everybody and when the when the scenario doesn't call for that typically right yeah yeah uh so i think like an example of that could be uh in was it it's not product master mold uh you start off with a uh, sentinel in front of everyone so you know a particular challenge could be like everyone starts out with a sentinel mark eight uh the most fun of all the sentinels you can get um and so that just you know, makes it a little more uh, interesting uh, during that scenario uh, if you've already played it a bunch of times. In other words, an achievement, like a list of achievements that are very, very doable. Like mostly just trying things, not necessarily like trying it and winning it, right? Like the like Heroic 3, don't go and try and win Heroic 3. That's not going to be... Heroic 3 Venom Goblin. <laughs> I'm so pumped. Heroic 3 Claw, remember that? Gross, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's going to be no no heroics uh, uh, as part of these. Uh, that's not really, I think, the theme we're going for. Um, uh, no heroics, no extra surge kind of things. Uh, that's that's definitely not the kind of fun we're looking for. And this will uh, be like a card you get right when you walk in. Is the plan still to do like a double-sided card where one of them is like epic achievements and one of the sides is like social achievements yeah yeah so i the the, yeah go ahead what oh i said sweet i'm excited oh uh i thought you said wait uh yeah so the hopefully we can fit everything on a double-sided card but yeah one side will be i think scenario specific and then the back side will probably be uh things to do kind of socially to help with uh mingling with other players and uh, one of the things I, I wish I did more of last year was play with the different people that I didn't know. Um, and so hopefully this will help with some of that. Yeah, that was one of my favorite things last year is I had everybody I play with sign my mat. So it's kind of like a yearbook of all the people I played with at the con. And my goal is to get more signatures than last time. So we'll see. Who can do it? I think I can do it. Especially if I don't play with you anymore. I'm just yeah, stop playing with me. Okay, so, so that achievement oh, yeah. cards are are they'll take place over the entire weekend, right? Um, yeah, and you can obviously do it past the weekend too, right? Like, we're, no one's going to stop you. Um, right. We won't be collecting them or anything like that. Yeah, they're they're for you. But yeah, so they're meant to help you facilitate your games, pick what you want to play, meet people to play with. So let's get to the events and talk about some of the things you'll get to play in if you come to the Con of Heroes. Yeah. Um, well, so it officially starts on. Friday, May 5th. Um, but since this is a MCM episode, we can talk about, let's talk about this. On Thursday, May 4th, in the evening, Kennedy Hawk and myself will be doing a live um, podcast show at the hotel next to the convention center. So um, check out the website. We have a group rate, I think, still um, for the hotel. If you don't have a place to stay, um, I think they still have that group rate available for con goers and we're going to be doing a live show um in like the lobby area and uh the plan right now is to have people come up and and talk with kennedy hawk and myself about about the show about the game um and speak their mind to the rest of the community on one of our episodes um yeah, we'll have like a list of prepared questions. So if you want to come up, we have some questions we can ask you about the game, right? What's your favorite hero? What's your favorite aspect? Why does protection suck? And uh, if you have I, something you to, want to say to, instead, to be clear, you can just I go right into it. Yeah. I won't be asking that question. but I will, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, so, so it'll just be very relaxed. We'll have a drink um, and just kind of sit on one of, the, one, of the, one of the lounge areas and, and just record. 
So should be a good time. That that's going to be seven o'clock on Thursday, sort of uh, to kick off the convention for us. Um, and then the first official day of the convention is the next day, and we'll open up at ten o'clock. Yeah, so morning. doors open at ten. We'll probably do an announcement around ten thirty after everybody gets checked in, just letting you know the events for the day each day in case you haven't checked the schedule or are still figuring things out. A lot of people go to the store the day before if you get in early just to do pick up games of random things, but we'll have a, a sort of private convention room in the back of the store for Friday where we'll do our announcements and kick things off. So we'll yeah, welcome should, you to the con. I should point out too, um I think the store opens at ten, right? Or does it yes. open before that? It does open it at 10? Right at 10. 10. Okay. So so we'll have the convention doors open at the same time as the store. Yep. yep. Okay. We'll be okay. all set up and ready to go. Sorry, um, go ahead. No, you're fine. So we'll announce the events for each day. So I'm, we're going to go over the events today just so you know what's going on. But we're not going to tell you everything. So um, on Friday, there are three events. So starting at 1 p.m. Central, we will have... And this one's been announced on the website already. It's a matchup with Magneto. Um, and it's going to be sort of, you know, a event where you might affect other tables um, based on your results. And when you defeat different stages of Magneto, you'll have to come in and check in at the con booth. And we'll be making announcements that might, you know, attract or detract magnet counters from, from the main scheme. So we'll be doing a match against Magneto at 1 p.m., starting off strong with a really cinematic but difficult villain. So that'll be sort of our icebreaker, get to know different people, you know, form a group. A lot of times, um, last time we did an event like that at 1 p.m. and people like played with that group a ton the whole weekend because it was like a bonding experience. But at 4 p.m. we're going to shake things up again with our take on an epic multiplayer event. So this is going to involve a new con custom mod that was sponsored by the MCM team. Um, and you're going to be facing off against Claw as we hop through the multiverse and potentially even through, you know, different game areas. So I don't want to reveal too much. The oh, card there's... art is <laughs> almost in. And we'll probably do some card previews on the Con of Heroes website once we have the cards, like, officially finalized and sent to the printer so we know they're not going to change. But we'll give you an, an example of how that's going to work, how you're going to be able to affect other tables and other tables might be able to affect you as well. At the end of that, we'll be tallying up how many people defeated Claw and how many people lost. And if over 50% of the games are won, then we'll consider ourselves to have saved the multiverse, even if you know some universes got sacrificed along the way. Um, and we wrap Friday up at 7 p.m. It's a Marvel Champions mixer. So you're going to play with someone you haven't played with before um, and hang out with different community members for the rest of the night. You can grab a drink from games that are there, whether alcoholic or non-alcoholic, and just hang out and play some cool games. This is a great time to work on those achievement cards that Terrence talked about, because you can go and find an achievement, find other people that are working on the same one, and have a game together. And 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 the doors will close. We will have to close at eleven, so that starts at seven. But I mean, we'll, that we we have five hours from the that time time that starts till we have to actually close and be out of there. Yep. Yeah, I, I think last year we started probably trying to get people out. Probably, I think, like half past to 11, right? Right, um, right. Just because we got to close our doors and, and all that stuff, too. Yeah, so everyone will need to leave and because we have to actually close them at 11. So, and I think, what time does the store close? I'll have to look. Um, I'll have to check Games Center might close at 11 that day. Oh, yeah, keep going. Is it called Marvel Champions Mixer because it has the same acronym as Marvel Champions Monthly? Um, it, looks like it wasn't, but now it feels like it was. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, their their store hours will close at eleven. So they'll be kicking us out by then. They'll, yeah, they'll be kicking us out. All right, so that that wraps up Friday, and then we go to Saturday um, for even more events, right, Terrence? Yeah, so Saturday is kind of like. I mean, as cool as all the Friday events are, uh, I feel like Saturday is usually the busiest day uh, for the con because uh, some people travel in, can't take off work on Friday, so they might miss a good chunk of Friday. Um, and so I think this is where we expect to see the most people. So, you know, again, doors open at 10. Um, and then at 11 a.m., uh, we're going to start a three-scenario campaign. So, you know, maybe you made some friends at that mixer on Friday or maybe uh, as you're kind of 
getting back into the swing of things uh saturday morning you find some people but find a team and uh we'll be doing a kind of uh we did a scenario campaign also last saturday uh but i think it was like five was it five five scenarios last time it was only four give me credit come on i mean was venom goblin was last one was that true yes Venom it was Goblin four like, very long scenarios. Yeah. We've learned a lot since then. Yeah, Venom was one of them. Like, Venom Goblin feels like right. at least two scenarios, though, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so it's shorter this year based on feedback, because um, I don't think we wanted to take the whole day. I think last year we had a team that finished it, but they literally played just that campaign the entire time. Uh, so we want to avoid that this time around. Uh, but you'll fight off against uh, three different villains, one for each scenario, and then uh, maybe have some help uh, in the form of Mojo, maybe. Uh, I don't know how much you can trust that guy. Um, and then this year, we're going to have a theme uh, focused on Nemesis. Uh, so make sure to pick a team where you're playing with someone like Phoenix so you can have extra fun with uh, Dark Phoenix coming out. So, uh, yeah, exactly. so last, That's what last year's theme was... Dark Dark Phoenix is great. Um, by the way, I actually probably will pack Phoenix. Just just for this scenario campaign. Just for the scenario. Just for. Are, yeah, are, just for are you gonna do it so you can have no one pick you, like in the schoolyard, be like no one wants to play with you? <laughs> so so, uh, last year. So yeah, just to just to reiterate. So last year we had a more of like a scroll theme, right? Um, with like allies becoming minions and things like that. Um, am I am I misremembering that, Kennedy Hawk? Nope, that's totally right. So last year, the campaign started just with FFG cards, and then we had two custom mods. One was like a standard replacement set that swapped in in Mission 2, and then there was a scroll modular set that, yeah, turned your allies into minions, basically. But then, so this but then year, when you beat them, you got allies back, so that was kind of cool. Right. So, but this year, it's all about the Nemesis sets. So... That's actually pretty exciting. So even is there maybe I, maybe I shouldn't ask this. Uh, maybe is there a, a new standard set that we're going to be using for this? Uh, all will be revealed. Okay. Okay. Can neither confirm nor deny. Yeah, it should be fun because I, I think there's a lot of really fun nemesis uh, in the game. So I, I'm kind of curious: will people form teams based on uh, you know nemesis in addition to the heroes? Like you. <laughs> Uh, it'll be kind of neat to see kind of what what people come with for the groups there. Yeah, so consider that we talked earlier about what to bring. Consider that maybe um, in your decisions, right? In which heroes to bring? Yeah, I would definitely say so. Um, you know, some some nemesis sets are not made equal. I'm looking at you, Valkyrie. So think about uh, who you decide to play. I guess. Especially for this campaign, I should say. Because you're stuck playing as them for three scenarios. Stuck being the right word. Ooh. That, that is cryptic. Um, cool. Uh, anything else on the scenario campaign you all want to add in on? Um... Not too much. It will be a repeatable campaign, just like last time, so you'll get to take the campaign cards home with you, and you can go play it with your your friends and family back home. So we'll, like always, have all of our stuff printed play on the Con of Heroes or MCM websites, so you'll be able to access all of the cards, even if you don't attend the con and you're you know someone from overseas that can't make it to, to Minnesota. We totally understand. You'll be able to get a print-and-play file and play the same weekend. Yep, so if you're interested in doing the scrawl um, stuff from last year, uh, you can go print that off uh, off the website right now. Um, so so after the campaign, we're uh, going to have photo op a photo kind of op uh, to kind of just have something to save for our archives and records uh, like we did last year. I think last year we had one on Sunday. Um, which was maybe not the right day because plenty of people leave on Sunday or don't come in because um, they have early flights or something. So we're going to do that on Saturday uh, instead um, at 5 p.m., but that time might change depending on how things go. Uh, and then after the photo op, um, later in the evening, we're going to have another event at 7 p.m. Um, 
where I hope you like puns uh, as much as Spider-Man does, um, because we'll be doing some fun event facing off against Sandman um, with kind of the whole community. So uh, another kind of good chance to play with uh, people you may not have uh, played with yet at the con, um, and uh, a good probably good opportunity to do uh, maybe not the scenario achievement cards, but maybe some of the more social achievement cards. Idea. It's a good idea. And you're going to hear a lot of me, I guess, is what I've been told. So, did, sorry. Did you, vol- did you volunteer to MC, or were you voluntold? I was voluntold, for sure. But That but is right. a bold-faced lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, as punishment, you can tell us about Sunday. Oh, That's it. Okay, okay so, so that'll be Saturday. Um, and again, I think the hours are till 11 again on Saturday. And then Sunday, we'll open it back up at 10 in the morning. And I think we close at 6. Um, yeah, I, I think believe. that's what the store hours are on Sunday is 6. So, um, we might have to, well, we'll see. I think we ended up closing at 4.30 because we have to clean up the room and pass the keys back over. Um, But the center will be open until 6, and some people did play until the very end to sit out in the lobby area playing too. Yeah, so so that's true. We did have a lot of people playing still after the convention was over, technically in at Game Center on their tables. Um, So Sunday is a pretty relaxed day. play with a host or community, a content creator. Um, so MCM will be there. Um, other community members um, and content creators will, will be there. So if you're a content creator who wants to get involved in, in this, um, why don't you had, you can ping Kennedy Hawk on Discord. You can email our Marvel Champions Monthly at gmail.com to see how you can get involved in this on this pretty relaxed day. Um, and I think the goal, so we're, we're going to have like kids attend that day. We're going to have um, maybe, I mean, depending if they don't want to play like some, hopefully the goal is to have some um, coloring pages and those types of things. And, um, you know, non Marvel champion, non champions games. So other Marvel themed games, other games, it's a really relaxed day. Um, so no, like, I, I guess I can't say no official event, but but there are no like campaigns or events like that. Um, and it is it it is our bring your kid day for the local attendees or or people that are vacationing with kids. So that is encouraged. Um, we are a family friendly convention. We want to see families. It, it it's really fun to see kids um, playing Marvel Champions and doing other Marvel related things. At, at the convention so yeah i know i know americano and i'll be playing games all weekend and trying to hit up as many people as possible so here we're gonna like rapid fire each basically have a table set up with one or two of our favorite scenarios and see if we can play with as many people as possible so if you have a deck you want us to play feel free to bring it otherwise we'll play like our favorite deck with you and just chat about the game a couple content creators from youtube have already pinged me saying that they're going to be there that day too so um, you will be getting pings back from me here shortly so we can organize that and make sure there's a space for you to have a table to play with people. So if you have a favorite content creator um, or one of the hosts from the con, be sure to ping them and say like, hey, I want to catch a game with you on Sunday and uh, introduce yourself. We're just real people too. That's what we want to emphasize. We're just real people. Yep, and I'm not very good at the game, so um, I could use your help you you can help Americano actually finish his achievement card. Exactly. Yeah, great day to do your achievement card. There you go. At least great day to do Americano's achievement card. Yeah. Yeah. He'll, yeah, he'll please help me. Please help Difficult me. protection. Two turns <laughs> behind. And that's it. That's going to be Con of Heroes 2023. So way more events than last year. Um, it's going to be a blast. We're really going all out with the swag and with... Some of these events are going to be really abstract or out there and fun. So I'm excited to share it with everybody. Excited to see the people from last year and some new faces. So be sure to introduce yourself to us when you're checking in. And then 
there's going to be a mass flux of people getting checked in, so we'll probably push you along pretty rapidly, um, but then we'll come around and talk with everybody. So just as a reminder, again, so the con is May 5th through 7th. You want to sign up as soon as possible and get your tickets through conofheroes.com, which should send you to a Tito ticketing agent. Um, if you want to do a playmat add-on, the deadline for that is February 28th. We will have a limited availability of playmats after that point because we have to turn in our final number. And likewise on swag, if you want to guarantee that you have your swag at check-in on the con, try to get your ticket in by March 15th. Otherwise, there is a chance that it will end up being in like the second wave of printings and stuff like that. But looking forward to seeing you all there. Any It'll last be a blast. Words, It'll it be, a blast. be a blast. I'm excited. Uh, my favorite thing from last year and the thing I'm most excited about this year is just playing and just getting to talk to everybody um, in the community or, or everyone that's able to make it, obviously, um, in the community that, you know, it's just one of those events that last year was the first time. It's going to be a yearly thing where we just get a just to see friends, you know. Yeah, ditto. Uh, I I feel like it's I went to I go to Gen Con as well uh, sometimes, and it is nice just to go to a smaller convention where uh, it is about playing games um, and not as much about kind of all the other stuff that surrounds Gen Con, which can be a lot. And so uh, this is kind of a lot in a different way, but it's you know an amazing community and people are just super friendly and want to just chat and play games. So that'll be super fun. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll have to have Terrence on for like an actual episode instead of just an extended con of heroes advertising, but we'll make sure that happens too. So I can be a guest on more than one, one thing at a time. Well, the problem is we record directly during your stream as we all make fun of it. So no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we'll make it work. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thanks for having me. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Marvel Champions Monthly. If you liked this content, be sure to like, subscribe, or leave a comment on the video, letting us know what else you would love to see from the world of Marvel Champions. You can also join us on our Discord or support our work on Patreon in the links in the description below.